Well, everyone, my name is Juan. Um, I was born in China, in the Sichuan region of China. Um, Sichuan in America has been anglicized to like Sichuan. You may see that we have restaurants in town that are called like Lao Sichuan, Lao Sichuan. But basically, it's the central part of China. It's the province that is next to Tibet. And we're probably most well known for our super spicy food and our pandas. So anytime you see pandas, they are from my region because they have to eat bamboo. And my region has a plethora of bamboo. And um, growing up, I actually went to like the panda conservation station instead of the zoo. I thought zoos only have pandas, but I learned later on in life. No, that's not the case. It's just where I'm from. <laughs> um, and the reason why Sichuan is really well known for our spicy food is because how humid this part of the world is. We need all the spices that we can get to actually keep the food fresh. So there's a lot of pickled food and a lot of spiced food. Um, Sichuan in Chinese means the four mountain ranges. So as you imagine, the city, Chengdu, where capital is kind of like right in the middle, surrounded by mountains on every side. So all of the rain just like accumulates in this basin. That's why people have to eat spicy food. But actually there's different variations of spicy. We have the spicy that makes your tongue like, oh, this is so spicy. But we also have a very unique flavor profile that is numbing. So <laughs> you have that front of the tongue spice, and then you have like an overall mouth numbing sensation. This is a very typical flavor profile from Sichuan. We also use cumin a lot in our cuisine. So there's all sorts of like spice flavors. Today, I'm going to go a little hardcore on the spice, but feel free to tone it down if you are not as uh, used to having so many spicy profiles in your mouth. Have a glass of milk on hand too, if it's just like too much. Um, all right, we're going to get started. Yeah, my love of cooking probably happened, I don't know, like as, as a small child, um, my grandmother had her own dumpling tricycle. <laughs> that was our family business. So ever since I was little, I remember um, making dumplings with her and my grandfather. This was their gig after they retired. And we would pedal the tricycle to markets and then we would sell the dumplings to um, people who were leaving work because it was a fast easy meal. Everyone loved my grandmother's dumpling business. And I think from her, she really like cultivated in me this love of cooking. Although she was a transplant to Sichuan herself, she didn't really cook that many spicy foods, but both my parents grew up in Sichuan, so they grew up used to eating spicy, and so did I. All right, so to get started today, um, I am going to be using my Instapot to make rice. A lot of families, Chinese families, Asian families, will definitely have a trusty rice cooker of some sort. For my family, I don't have a lot of counter space, so I want something that has multiple uh, uses, and the Instapot is my go-to rice cooker. Same with my mom. After she discovered the Instapot, she's like, I shipped one to your house. It's right there. Open it. You don't need a rice cooker anymore. This thing does everything. So I will use the Instapot. If you're not using an Instapot or some sort of a rice cooker with a keep warm function, you're going to want to start this process in about like halfway through because you don't want your rice to get cold on the stovetop. So for those of you who are following along with your own rice cookers, we're going to first start by washing and soaking our rice. So you probably should have received a container of rice. There are many types of rice <laughs> in the world, in Asia. The type that we're using today is called the Californian short grain sushi rice. Sushi is a Japanese food, as you all know, but rice is universal. <laughs> so um, the way you would make sushi rice has less water content than what you would do for this recipe. My family, we are short grain rice eaters. We like the chew of the short grain rice. But when you go to Chinese restaurants or other Chinese families, you may encounter long grain 
whatever. So to each their own, um, you can do whatever. Okay. And some grains uh, require pre-soaking, some require pre-soaking overnight. For our specific one, we're just gonna pre-soak for 15 minutes. I'm gonna pull up my recipe card because I don't typically cook with recipes. So I wanna make sure that everything that's portion right um, and you can follow along. So for this, we're gonna do one and a half cups of rice. This is the whole thing. Just shy. All right. And we're gonna wash and rinse this rice. It is very important for you to wash and rinse thoroughly because you need to get off like the excess starch and all of that in your rice. So I'm gonna go over to the sink and I'm gonna wash and rinse until the water is running cool. Pretty easy. And with cold water or oh, for sure. cold water. Because you don't want your food first. Don't want to get sticky if the starch stays on. Yeah. Just not the right consistency. Number three. And um, unlike some other cooking methods for rice, we will not be draining the rice. At the end, there's no rinsing, draining at the end of the cooking process. I know this is something maybe in some Indian cuisines. A lot of Western style rice cooking, but we we will not be doing that. And hot tip: if you are wanting to make fried rice, you would use leftover rice only. So that way, the rice has time to sit in the refrigerator and dry out overnight. So it won't be fried. It's when you get the ingredients in there. All right. I'm just going to set my rice aside and let it soak for about 15 minutes. Those of you who are doing stone top, just sit tight, you're good. Next, we're going to get to the really fun part, which is making a very delicious and simple cucumber salad. Now, if you are feeling frustrated or need to take it out on something, I <laughs> highly recommend this recipe. It's called smash cucumbers because we're going to smash it. <laughs> so they need a, just a, a spoon or like a wooden spoon? Yeah, in, okay. in Chinese cooking, we don't have chef knives like this. Typically, we just use one giant cleaver for everything. So if you have that, <laughs> you can smash it with your cleaver. I don't have a cleaver. This is the co-op's knife, so I don't, I'm not going to go there. Instead, I'm going to smash with my wooden spoon. Okay. You should have in your pack four small cucumbers, mm -hmm. right? You have these four pickling size cucumbers. You can either do four pickling size or two English, like the long cucumbers, because you're gonna eat the skin. So you want the skin to be pretty tender uh, when you're making this. The next step, um, so I'll wait for everyone to wash their cucumbers. I've pre-washed mine. I'm just gonna trim the edges off. And when you're ready, we're gonna start smashing. <laughs> Just give everyone some time to wash and start we'll, trimming. Your we'll give you a second to wash the cucumbers and then uh, trim off the edges. ready. <laughs> we'll start smashing. And there is a reason why we smash. It's so that you can get jagged edges that absorb more flavor. So it's not just for fun, although it is really fun. 
Type in the comments when you're ready. I just said ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Martha's ready. Ready. All okay. right, we're gonna smash. Um, I mean, I don't have eye protection, but you'll be fine. <laughs> okay, so we take the cucumber. We're going to take the back of the wooden spoon. You can use um, like a rolling pin. You can use just anything that's not going to like fracture <laughs> would be good to smash your cucumber okay so you're just good i think there's nothing to it you just you just go <laughs> gonna get a little messy yes you see this yes smashed <laughs> we're not going to smash it until it's liquid we just want to kind of jagged edges and for a single cucumber to be kind of smushed and broken apart Oh. All right, we're going to continue. Follow along. I'm sorry about the sound. It's a little <laughs> violent, but kind of fun. <laughs> you have some Sunday scaries and you just need to like smash your frustration. Um, to help it from rolling, you can find a side that's relatively stable before you smash. Last one. Hope you're having fun smashing away with me. <laughs> Remove your other hand for sure. <laughs> okay, nice. Thank God. <laughs> I'm gonna get a paper towel to clean up my workstation a little bit. And you can see from the seeds that these are going to be pretty tender cucumbers, and you can eat the seeds. If you don't have as young or tender of a cucumber, you may want to scrape the seeds out. But for this, you're fine. Same with the skin. I think we're going to eat the skin. And all of the vegetables we're using today are coming from local farms. So the cucumbers come from Sola Gratia and then the eggplant. And, um, Eggplants and tomatoes come from prairie herbs and green beans. And yeah, we're using a lot of local. All right. So once our cucumbers are smashed open like this, we're just going to cut them in half. We're going to flip them and kind of cut them into half inch by size. And a tip, if you're cutting any vegetables that's rolling around on your board, you want the flat side down so it doesn't roll around. And I also actually put a wet paper towel under my cutting board so it's not going anywhere. This I learned as an omelet maker when I was 16. <laughs> it was a really stressful job because I had to make omelets to order as people stared at me and I did not enjoy that. It was so much pressure for a 16 year old. That was too much. Yeah. All right. So, actually, this apron is from my omelet days. Oh, I wore it because oh. it was symbolic. Yeah. <laughs> Started from omelets and now we're here. All right. So, cucumbers um, have a lot of water, and that's what makes them so crunchy, so delicious, and so refreshing for the summer. But um, what happens when you salt a vegetable that has a lot of water, you'll draw the water out. So we don't want that to happen as we're making the salad. So what we're going to do is pre-salt, pre-sugar a little bit to kind of marinate and make a very quick pickle. It's, it's really like an hour long pickle. Um, if you have some time, definitely try to do this for at least 10 minutes. We have plenty of time today, so we're just going to prep this and put it in the fridge and let it kind of draw the water out. We'll later like wring out the water to make sure that this is all ready to go for mm -hmm. a salad. Mm -hmm. 
So I've got my little colander on hand. Later, I'm gonna kind of squeeze the water out. But for now, I'm gonna do my cucumber, chuck it into this bowl. And then I'm gonna salt. And we're gonna wanna salt with two teaspoons of salt and one of sugar. So you should have one of these little containers measured out with all the salt you're gonna to need today. Take your teaspoon and just do two right in. And we're gonna do a little bit of sugar. Same with your sugar, you should have received a little like plastic bag of sugar. So just take that and do one teaspoon of sugar. Easy peasy. And now I'm just going to mix it with my hands to make sure that it's nicely salted and sugared. And then we're going to put it in the fridge. We're going to finish the salad almost towards the very end of our meal just to give it enough time for the water to kind of come out of the cucumber and for it to develop that taste. You can just put it directly on your countertop if you want, or I'm gonna stick it in the fridge so it's like extra crispy and refreshing. Mm -hmm. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> the suction, the suction direction is wrong in this fridge. <laughs> All right, nice. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little mise en place. So mise en place, is a French term, right, to put in place. And in a lot of um, restaurants and cooking, they will use this to make sure you just have everything on hand and ready to go. Same with Chinese cooking. We also need to do a mise en place, especially since a lot of these dishes have repeating ingredients like ginger and garlic. These are going to be the bases of almost like 90% of Chinese cuisine, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean up this cucumber, these, uh, the violet remnants of the cucumber, <laughs> and then I'm gonna start prepping the ginger and garlic, and I would like you to do that along with me. So let's clean up our station and prep. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions so far? All right. In my household, my grandpa is on the prep duty. Um, he's not really the one making the recipes or anything like that. That's grandma's job. But my granddad, poor guy, he is just like off in the corner chopping onions indefinitely. Like I don't, I think 80% of the time I see him, he's prepping some sort of ingredient. <laughs> Would you say that's true, Quentin? Yeah. Every time you visit my family, yeah. he's like chopping <laughs> Well, yeah, I, 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 brought him, I bought him a Julian pool for Christmas. Wow, I was a big hit in oh, my family. Uh -huh. Now that was. Right. So, you probably have gotten one clove of garlic mm -hmm. in your um, bag. What we're going to do is you're going to separate out three cloves, sorry, one bulb of garlic. You're going to separate out three cloves and set it aside. We're going to use that for the cucumber salad later, and it's going to be a lot more finely diced than what we're going to do for stir fries. So I'm going to take my re remaining clove of garlic and I'm going to prep my ginger. There is a difference between old and young ginger, just to let everyone know. Older ginger kind of has like wrinklier skin. This does matter for some recipes because for some ginger recipes, you want the old stuff. So it has extra starch and it does some like magical thing where you can make desserts and it will set into a pudding. Whereas young, young ginger doesn't do that. So I mean, in this case, you can use whatever ginger, but just to let you know that there is a difference. Yeah, young ginger will have very smooth skin. This one is like middle-aged, I guess. <laughs> 
garlic. I'm going to separate out the cloves. And you may need, um, I mean, you can vary up the garlic however you want. Like if you're really into garlic, use more. If you're not into garlic, use less. It's kind of to taste. But almost every single stir fry starts with ginger and garlic. So you will need some of this. Sarah, we may need to supplement if we run out of garlic. I tried growing my own garlic this year and um, it was so fun. I'm also really big into gardening. And one of the reasons why I love to garden is because I love to eat and I love observing and learning about different things. And I like to grow things that are Asian ingredients that you don't typically find at the supermarket. But I was deci I decided to grow garlic just to see what it's about. And um, I loved it. It was such a cool experience, except it took like, <laughs> I put my garlic in, you just uh, put one ball into the ground and you wait. So I put it in in October. I think we harvested in July. So it's a really test of patience. And now I really like treasure each clove more. Anyways, knowing how much work goes into it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> But I did hard neck garlic, so we were able to eat some of the steaks too, and that was mm -hmm. cool. So I'm just going to trim my garlic a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to do thin slices. Thin slices of garlic. We're going to eventually dice them up to be small dice. Oh. I do have a garlic press that I can have one too. I have one at home. So after I got the thin slices, I'm going to start going. So I did it this way. I'm going to do perpendicular and kind of mince it like so, but use whatever method works for you. And it does not have to be perfect. It does not have to be uniform. It's just kind of going to flavor our oils as we do our stir fries. And when my grandparents do this, my grandpa would prep the garlic and he would prep the ginger and kind of lay everything out on one plate so it's easy access for my grandma when she's like doing stir fries because stir fries come together really quick. I'm like shocked how fast we can get meals out in my house. Yeah, they'll put some piece that they, they tag team it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and my grandma's really bossy. <laughs> No scrambles are. <laughs> Garlic sometimes will oxidize if you leave it out. So in order to help with that, if you're going to pre-prep garlic for a while, I would just put some oil on top to keep it from oxidizing. Okay. Garlic. Done. You can see it's not a huge dice. Mm. All right, next up, ginger. Um, for Chinese families, I don't think we typically peel ginger. You can if you want. I'm not gonna do it. That's fine. It's going into a super hot wok. So again, same thing. I'm gonna do thin slices. See this. Ginger's kind of rolling around. Maybe you can cut it in half so it has a stable surface, it's not going to go anywhere, and then cut it in thin slices. I 
houses are gonna smell so good. I hope so. And now we're kind of just gonna give it a rough chop. You want it to be small, but doesn't have to be perfect again. Uh, as I said, are we cutting the ginger? So yeah, we're gonna cut the, we're gonna mince all the, of the ginger. All of the ginger and only three cloves of the garlic. Uh, all of the garlic except for three cloves. Okay, all of the garlic <laughs> except three cloves. Yeah, we're mince. Um, and Robert Smith says, uh, Fresher National Market carries a lot of brands after fast food one share pictures of the cooking wine and soy sauces to use. Absolutely. Um, I know that can be very overwhelming, especially at Fresh because they have not only Chinese brands, they also have brands from other Asian countries. Mm -hmm. So like a soy sauce from Korea would be different from a soy sauce from China, different from a soy sauce from Thailand, Vietnam, et cetera. Um, what makes soy sauces most different is their salt content. So they are not one-to-one -one, typically and their use. So some Chinese soy sauces, which we will not be using today, are basically just for color. They make you kind of dark brown and syrupy. And some soy sauces are specifically for soups. That's, you'll find that a lot in Korean soy mm. sauces. So yes, definitely I will share what type we use. Sarah, the one that we use today, is it um, tamari. tamari? Okay, so you may not know this, but soy sauce is not typically gluten-free. So today we're actually using a gluten-free tamari from the co-op, just to make sure that this recipe is good to go for our friends who may have gluten allergies or maybe eating gluten-free. I don't know what part of this process makes it not gluten-free. All I know is it's <laughs> Yeah. I might be wrong. I don't know if I'm right in saying it, but I think it just involves maybe some wheat berries, maybe? To help with the fermentation. Yeah. No. One of my, I watch a lot of um, Asian cooks on YouTube. And um, one of my favorite ladies on YouTube is Manji, who makes Korean food. She'll walk you through how to make soy sauce over a year period in her Manhattan apartment. Oh. And she like sneaks off somewhere to like boil her soy sauce. Hilarious. And I love her name. M-A-A-N-G-C-H-I. So we're done with our ginger. Yeah, it looks beautiful. It smells fragrant, excellent. Okay. Now we're gonna prep our green onions. I'm gonna give mine a quick rinse. I'll be right back and we're gonna make them into thin slices. Green onions are up on the deck. How's everyone doing so far? We minced the ginger and the garlic. Um, the scallions. So in French cuisine, you may have heard the French uh, trinity, which is uh, carrot, celery, and onions. And in Chinese cooking, it is garlic, ginger, and scallions, or green onions. I know that. Yeah. And we have it everywhere for everything. Um, sometimes we will garnish with cilantro. Um, I didn't add any in this recipe because I know people are kind of, you know, have some feelings about cilantro or like really feel like it tastes like soap. So in this case, I think green onion is like a safe bet for everyone, but feel free if you make it yourself, customize and you can sprinkle some cilantro on top. Is there a word for it um, for, for the term of the Trinity? We don't have a term. We just say all the ingredients. Um, so this is this is jiang, and then this is suan. So you would say it quickly, like <laughs> We don't need a special word because Chinese is very fast. It like gets to the point <laughs> really quickly. All right, and now we're just going to slice them. We're not gonna mince, we're gonna slice. And I'll separate out the white part and the um, tip because you know the white part does cook a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. 
after. This cutting board is amazing. I've never worked on such a gigantic cutting board. <laughs> we we have so many cutting boards at the co-op, so we chose the big one, and it's it's nice. It's awesome. You don't have anything really falling off as much. How's everyone doing with their prep? How's your green onions doing? And uh, Anna is using a pestle and mortar. Okay. <laughs> I got mine too. I think that's David. <laughs> that you, David? Things, so I'm gonna smash my garlic in a little bit for the um, final dressing of our cucumber salad. Mm. Right now I'll like keep it tame because I already smashed a lot of cucumbers earlier. I haven't. All right, now let's actually cook. <laughs> so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring six cups of water to boil and bear with me. I've never used an induction stove, so this could be bad. This it, it's good with boiling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so six cups of water into your soup pot for the egg drop soup. I've also pre-washed my tomatoes. So if you have not done that, go ahead and do that at the step as well because we're about to cook. So pre-wash your tomatoes. Turn the audio off of this one just so they're not. And then for heat, yes, please. Will you please help me bring this to a boil? Yeah, sure, please. Okay, so you're gonna boil your water. We've got it going on over here. This year I foolishly planted, I don't know, 20 to 30 tomatoes. It's totally my folly. I don't know why I did that. I was like, of course I will never have enough tomatoes. I was wrong. Um, at one point in the summer, my house, every single countertop was covered. And I just, I'm like having a mental breakdown because I don't want to can. I just want to eat them fresh, but of course I cannot. <laughs> Anyways, I'm always looking for new recipes to put in tomatoes. If you are having this type of problem at this point of the summer, this is a great recipe. I would use probably a paste-like tomato. So there's less liquid, but any, any type is fine. And these are so nice and fresh. So what we're going to do is we are going to thinly slice the tomatoes. So let's do that. And we're gonna plop it into the soup. The main ingredient of the soup is tomato. So we wanna give it a lot of time to infuse the broth. It's not made with chicken broth or anything like that, it's straight up tomato and salt. So we really need to get the best flavor out of these tomatoes and it can simmer away as we do the other. So for today's cooking class, you'll notice that there are, let's see, cucumber, eggplant, beans, three uh, dishes and one soup. In Chinese family home cooking, this combination is very typical. Like when you go home to eat a dinner, like your mom, dad, whatever, would probably put on three dishes, one soup. Like there's a term for that. So that's why I wanted to show you, you know, as a Chinese home cook, let's do something that is a little bit typical. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just remove the little core part of the tomato and cut them in fourth, and then we'll slice them up. I would say in Chinese cooking, home cooking, there's not a lot of meat. Um, I think maybe it's because historically meat is expensive. So the really the highlight is the vegetables. You know, people had their own gardens or go to the market to get food. So seasonal vegetables is a big part of the cuisine. Actually, growing up as a kid, I ate tomatoes as a dessert. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, my grandma or grandpa would like add some sugar to it, thinly sliced, and we would just have it as dessert. That's kind of oh. weird. That tastes I love that. I grew up eating uh, sliced tomatoes and salt. Ooh. Just and that was that was our summertime delicacy. Okay. At least it's summer like tomato. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the smell of the leaves. Are any of you guys growing tomatoes this summer? Feel free to type it in the chat. And no, I have not been using my mortar pestle. I've just been mincing, but you can if you want. Why not? It's kind of fun. Um, the reason why I have, have recommended this is when we make our cucumber salad, the size of my garlic, I wanted to get it finer. So you're not getting giant chunks of garlic as you're eating the salad. So it's more like a paste. But if you want to do it now, that's fine too. Okay, next step after we have poured and quartered is we're just going to kind of finely slice our tomatoes. We're not going to remove the seeds. We want everything in the soup. And we're going to do a little dice. Make a big dice. This knife is pretty short. It's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are these tomatoes local too? Yeah, so the tomatoes come from Prairie Earth, which is probably the biggest organic produce farm in Illinois. They're in, um, they're close to Bloomington in Atlanta, Illinois, so about an hour away. So they grew the tomatoes you're using, they grew the garlic and the eggplant. I would say Chinese cooking is pretty flexible. So when you're making this soup, like you can add other things if you want. It's not a set recipe and every family does things differently. You can add four eggs, you can add two eggs, you can add no eggs, add cilantro. Um, you can add little zucchini uh, slices if you'd like. Lufa is fantastic. A lot of Asian families, Chinese families, Add lupa to soup, the tender ones, not when they get <laughs> stringy. <laughs> um, oh, I didn't know that. Winter squash, even cucumber sometimes, which I find kind of weird, but you know, that's okay. Whatever your family prefers. If you had just extra stuff hanging around and you know, chuck it in a soup. And as you guys know, Chinese soups are not um, like you can't. <laughs> they're not, uh, how do I say this? They're a little bit translucent because we don't put any cream or anything like that in the soup. But there is going to be a bit of a thick consistency and that comes from the cornstarch. We use a lot of cornstarch in Chinese cooking. It's either cornstarch or mung bean starch or some sort of a starch component. And that will help the ingredients suspend in the soup instead of all going to the bottom. So we'll do that at the very end. And you'll see cornstarch as kind of like a common theme everywhere. Both in stir fries and in soups. Not in the salad, not doing that. Questions? Any questions so far? How the tomatoes? Oh, these are so good. They smell mm -hmm. so like essence of tomato. Mm -hmm. like all... And you're gonna get a Larger bowl. Wow. 
Mars boiling. Perfect. Will you please help me turn the water to like um, simmer? Absolutely. Simmer. Okay, fill the tomatoes in. You don't want to lose any of the juices. This is what's going to give it flavor. Really important. <laughs> so it's really different from a Western style tomato soup yeah. because we're not going to blitz it in the end. Yeah. We're going to have these tomato chunks. Mm. Can you put the water in and the liquid in? Oh, too? for sure. Yeah. Wow. Oh, it looks so nice. It looks so pink. Okay. Let me wash my hands and clean my board, and then we'll put some salt in. Mm. Now we're going to take our teaspoon measurer and our salt. We're going to go over here and whack in two teaspoons of salt. Really, the umami flavor is just coming from salt and tomatoes. Mm. Take my little spoon and stir it around, mix everything in. And this soup can just hang out while we do everything else. Yeah, a little bit more of like a boil. Yeah, not super crazy, but a little bit of a boil. All right. At this point, those of you who are using a rice cooker, uh, you are probably ready to go. I think it has been 15 minutes. So follow along, I'm going to drain my rice and then I'm going to add in just shy of two cups of water and we'll start the rice cooker. Uh, should we skip oil? Um, I would say like a gentle simmer. Yeah. I'll give you a, I'll, I'll give you some shots of when, <laughs> when it starts to heat back up again. I think the colder tomatoes will take a second. Oh yeah, so. for sure. Sure. It'll simmer away for quite a while as we do everything else. Okay, so for those of you doing rice cooker or Instapot, we're gonna do our rice right now. Let me check the time to make sure if you're doing a stove top. Uh, if you're doing a stove top method, it'll take, no, wait a little bit longer. <laughs> So strain, if you're doing this not strain, strain it out. Yep. And because it's not possible to get all the water off the rice, uh, I'm not going to use a full two cups of water. I'm going to use shy of two cups. Just shy two cups of water. Or this is again one and one half cups of rice. And this ratio, water to rice ratio, will be different for all types of rice. Just make sure. Never know. <laughs> Now 
Now I'm just going to turn my pot to the rice function and it'll do its thing. All right. I have notes on here for the order of operations to make it easier for everybody. Okay, so rice cooker folks do the rice cooker bit and everyone else, um, you're gonna go ahead and prep eggplant. So you should have received three eggplants in your basket or your bag of goodies from Common Ground. This is Asian eggplant. It's long and skinny, not like the fat ones um, that we're typically used to. So I have three. And the reason why we use this type is because it kind of looks better in the presentation, but also because the skin is slightly more tender for these than the dark purple fat ones. So I have gone ahead and pre-washed my eggplant. Um, Actually, what I will do is I'm going to boil some water in my steamer. You're going to get your steamer eggplant combination ready. So what kind of pot? Basically just something that has a lid, kind yeah. of like a, a saute pan. With a exactly. Lid. So I have many different ways to steam things in my house. This is a recent addition. This is a nonstick wok that I got from Amazon. It's like $30 maybe. And it comes with this steamer insert. So I'm going to boil some water at the bottom with my steamer on, and I'm going to have this ready for my eggplant in a little bit. So use whatever steaming implement. Here's, here's a look at the <laughs> Tomatoes, is this doing too Ooh, much of a boil? Too much of a boil. That's okay. Yeah, that's better, like small bubbles in there. So. Okay. It's incredible how fast induction is. <laughs> I'm like <know>. shocked. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, we'll just let this hang out. Oh, this is so much better than my <laughs> electric stove at home. Okay, so we have the steaming implement. A lot of Chinese food is steamed. So if you really like Chinese food, I highly recommend investing in some sort of a steamer situation. It can be bamboo stacks. I've never seen that at an Asian person's house. <laughs> um, most Chinese people will have giant um, like stainless steel pots that have multi-tiers multi just because it's easier to clean if you use it every day. So that's why I've gone with this option as well. At restaurants, you'll see the steamer baskets because they're super cool. <laughs> so just a little water and the lid and the cup just to boil. To boil. Okay. Is this uh, okay? Yeah, that's fine. Just okay, just a gentle, gentle boil somewhere around here. I may scoop up some of this foamy bit just because it's not as gorgeous yeah. <laughs> in a soup, but I'll do that cool. before we add the eggs so the eggs don't mix in with this oh, foam. I think we will. All right, back to the egg now. We're going to want to have a big bowl on hand for your eggplant because we're going to be mixing the eggplant in some cornstarch. So here's the where that cornstarch comes in. Some cornstarch and some white vinegar. You should have these ingredients in your bag. The cornstarch comes in a little baggie like this and the white vinegar is in one of these black small containers. The reason why we do the white vinegar on the cut eggplant is because eggplant oxidizes and it will turn brown. So we don't want that and we want some white vinegar. 
and the cornstarch will become kind of a sticky coat on the outside of the eggplant when we steam so that it's ready to absorb and grab onto more sauce. So this dish has a not super appetizing name of fish fragrant eggplant or aubergine. And the reason is not because it has any fish in it. It's because historically when people made fish dishes, they used some combination of sweet and sour. And that's the same flavor combination we use for this dish. That's why it's called fish fragrant. I have heard that in some old, old Chinese recipes that some like fermented fish paste was also used, but who knows what the actual <laughs> um, reason this is, but there's no fish in this dish. If you are uh, cooking the vegetarian version, you will be using a tofu, a firm tofu that the Common Ground Co-op carries for this dish. If you're doing the meat version, we're gonna do ground pork, which we will prep after we do the, the eggplant. Um, all right, let's start. In Chinese restaurants, this dish is served with fried eggplant. But for home cooking, I figure nobody wants to like bust out the fryer. So we're doing steam instead. And um, when you fry eggplants, the color will stay purple. When you steam, it will kind of dull out and become more like brownish purple instead of this vibrant purple. So, you know, just look out for that when you go to the restaurant and eat something that looks different. It's okay, it's healthier, right? There a particular restaurant, Chinese restaurant that you like here, or is it hard to compare to Hong Kong? I like Lao <laughs> Tzu on University. I think their flavors are pretty authentic. Um, we always go to Golden Harbor as well. So how we're gonna cut this is in about two inch segments. So this, and then we're gonna quarter like so. This way is just like a nice presentation when you're biting into the dish. Okay, so we're just gonna chuck it in this bowl. Where are these eggplants from? These eggplants are from Prairie Earth too. So. I am trying to grow eggplant this year, but mine were pretty destroyed by flea beetles early in the yeah, season. They, I don't they know can happened. get they destroyed mine. Yeah. <laughs> and last year too. So I'm not the best at growing eggplant. No, I figure with our abundance of local produce, maybe I'll just buy it <laughs> from people who can grow this. Yeah, they've got rows and rows and rows. We've got about 100 acres of produce. Um, Farm. Have you visited? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, wow. It's a really nice one. Yeah. They grow, I think they grow like 100 different types of that, uh, varieties of vegetables. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the steamer. Good. Right on time. Wow, that's so fast. I need to invest in an induction <laughs> setup. It's good for induction is great. The induction is burners are what we have here, but you know, it's not a people aren't usually as familiar with it as gas or electric. All right, I'm done cutting my eggplant. Now let me make sure I get the proportions right for you so you can follow along. All right, we are gonna toss with all of our white vinegar. The white vinegar. I'm gonna just put the whole thing in. We're not gonna use white vinegar anywhere else. Um, Abby had a question. Uh, should stovetop rice people be soaking rice right now? Is it about halfway through? Yes. yes. Yeah, yes. start soaking your rice. If you're doing it on the stovetop, 
How long do you usually put before? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So I've put all the white vinegar in, and now we're going to do one tablespoon of this cornstarch. So first, I'll just toss a little bit with my hand. Make sure that the vinegar is coating as much as possible, like evenly coating my eggplant to stop that oxidation process. Because it smells good. And the vinegar is important because, you know, this is fish fragrant eggplant and the eggplant is supposed to have a sour profile. So um, by pre vinegaring right now, it kind of enhances the flavor even during the steaming. Okay, so mm -hmm. I've lightly tossed in the vinegar. Now we're going to add one tablespoon of cornstarch. Sprinkle it in. And we're going to toss some more. And the cornstarch, you'll see, will kind of get absorbed, and that's okay. I like using my hands so I can feel what's going yeah. on. I think it's good. All right. Now that we've done this, we're just going to put it in the steamer and it's going to steam between 15 20 minutes. Let's see. Add your eggplant to the steamer. I don't pre oil, I don't think it sticks that badly. So just add a straight up. And they didn't have the steamer, they just a lower amount of water and, and so. yeah if you don't have a steamer i would look for a big pot you can invert um a bowl in it add some water put a plate on top and use that as a steamer as a steamer hat or if you have this system this is the best you can have all the also those like steamer racks or even that instapot steamer <laughs> i also use that a lot so does anyone not have a steamer and you need to show them how to do um, like a half of a steamer? Oh, it doesn't have a steamer. So okay. we can do like a, a big pot. Okay, let me show you. Oh, this is a really large pot. <laughs> Sure, or else it's not speaking. Or another plate. Or another plate. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, someone had a question. Let's see. Um, Lauren, should we use low heat for steaming? Um, good question. I would use medium high because you want the vapors to be like evaporating and cooking. Medium high for steaming. Yeah, that's good. Like on my stove, I would do like a seven. Here, I guess 220, <laughs> 240. This is 200. Yeah. Okay, so maybe more. 280. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Any other questions so far? So we've got here's a status update on the on the tomatoes and our eggplant, cukes are in the 
In the refrigerator? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, for those who are cooking with pork, you're going to follow along with me. For those who are not cooking with pork and instead have the tofu, you're going to just crumble your tofu in small crumbles in a bowl. Okay? Pork people, that sounds weird, pork people. <laughs> Cooking with pork, follow along with me. This is one pound of thawed ground pork from Moore Family Farm. I buy this all the time for everything dumplings, stir fry, whatever. And this is enough for both your eggplant dish and your um, green bean dish. So we're going to use the same prep method for both in one bowl. We'll just divide it in half for eggplant and half for the green. Okay. In Chinese cooking, we almost always pre-marinate or pre-treat our meats, just so that the flavor can be right, but more importantly, the texture. Texture of meat is very important. And in order to make sure that the meat is not too dry, um, we either add a combination of cornstarch or Chinese cooking wine, or you know, uh, I think cornstarch is the most important. It kind of locks in the moisture. Should we press the water out for the tofu? Yes, uh, if you're using that dry tofu, it's not, it's already pretty dry, but like pat it dry. You want to get it pretty dry. Pretty dry. Yeah. Okay, so I've emptied my pack. You want to have very clean hands because I'm about to go mix with my fingers. So let me go wash my hands and then I'll massage. So for the tofu folks, just press it. Press it dry with either some paper towels. Sometimes I use uh, like a cloth towel, or a kitchen towel, um, but you're gonna just crumble it up into a bowl and they're gonna be basically adding whatever ingredients that you're adding to your pork, but just to tofu. No, that tofu actually does not need anything. Okay, the tofu doesn't, the tofu doesn't need anything, but this is just for the, the pork. Chinese cooking wine. cooking wine. This is the cooking wine that we're using. Too short for this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to like remember what I did to combine all of these yeah. because these individual recipe cards are for individual dishes, but we're actually going to prep this together. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just trying to remember how many I put in for this combined dish. Any questions so far? So I think it is like a pinch of this white pepper. Chinese meats uh, almost always have white pepper. There's a very distinct flavor with white pepper. We almost never use black pepper, just white. I'm gonna do a little pinch of that on top, a generous pinch. And then I think I'm gonna do one tablespoon of cooking wine, and I'm gonna do two tablespoons of soy sauce just to pre-season. And I think this looks like one tablespoon. So I'm yeah. going to whack all of the cooking wine in. Easy. And people using tofu just crumble your tofu in a bowl. I think that tofu is pre seasoned and pre salted. That's why we're not doing this stuff. Could, could you say again just the amounts of everything that we're putting in this, in the pork? Sorry. Like how much of the soy sauce and everything? Sure, I would do a large pinch of the white pepper. I would white. do all of the cooking wine that you have. So two. So okay. you'll just dump the whole thing in. It should be one tablespoon total. And then two tablespoons of the soy sauce. Great, thank oh. you. Mm -hmm. 
But again, like Chinese home cooking, <laughs> I don't think anyone ever measures. It's probably the same for a lot of home cooking. So I really wanted to stick to the recipe for you all. <laughs> um, that says the tofu is just plain tofu. Should we add the same seasoning as for the meat? What kind of tofu do they have? They have the um, Oh, not the 300 grams packed of the wild. Oh, okay. Then yes, I would do that. Okay. They have both of these ingredients. I don't think they have this one, but they That's have okay. white sauce yeah. and the white pepper. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. It seems like we've sold out of the other tofu that I was testing. So in that case, you would do crumble your tofu. You don't need the cooking wine because the cooking wine is to take, uh, is to tenderize the meat. So you're good, don't worry. We're gonna add a little bit of white pepper and I would add, uh, yeah, two, one. Let's add one tablespoon of the soy sauce because this is two tablespoons for two different dishes. Mm -hmm for your tofu, you're only gonna use that tofu for the eggplant. Mm -hmm. So if you could measure out 300 grams, I don't know how much, <laughs> let me check, maybe half of it. Okay, yeah, 300 grams. Okay, so 300 grams of soy sauce. Okay, yeah, that's good. Oh no, this is 300 grams. Okay. Okay, you're good. Use the whole, all of it. Okay. 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 Yeah, the ginger. Yeah. All right, for those who are following along on the, actually all recipes, um, you're gonna take your hand. I like my hand, like using that, this to mix the best and we're just gonna squish. <laughs> you really want it to thoroughly incorporate into the meat. Uh, for those of you who are meat eaters, buying that cooking wine is great because um, it really helps to tenderize the meat. And uh, this is the cooking wine. I um, believe we got the, I think for the most part, we got most things at Far East. Um, and we got a few things at Fresh International. Yeah. Fresh um, will for sure have this. So sure. this is the, how do you pronounce this? Yeah, Shoxin Liu Jiu is cooking wine, but it always comes in this shape and it's almost always red. The label is always red yeah. and it's like amber colored liquid. It kind of looks like a whiskey color. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good investment. You'll <laughs> use it for all Chinese dishes, basically, that has meat. Okay, so we've incorporated our minced pork and I'm going to whack this in the fridge. Food safety at home. <laughs> How's everyone doing so far? Repeat the tofu spices again. I can write them down. Um, we did, I think it was a tablespoon of soy sauce, and a large pinch of white pepper. And we're getting the green beans out. So, all right. Yes, you should have one pound of green beans in your little pre prepets pack. Ooh, pre prepped pack. Yeah. <laughs> Love an alliteration. <laughs> so, what I've done is before this course, I've just washed my green beans, patted them super dry, and trimmed off the edges of the beans. Um, I find that, you know, you. Right now, the green beans are not super stringy. They're, they're fine. So you don't, I don't think you have to de-string them. And I'm gonna start the blistering process. You all following along at home, just wash and trim your beans and then put them in a pan and you can start blistering as well. It's gonna take a little bit to develop that blister um, 
look and taste. So that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna do next. They'll just need a pan. Yep. Okay. Need a saute pan. I also have one of these like oven things that I use at home. So if you have one of these heavy bottom Dutch oven pots, you can also use this. Um, whatever you've got on hand. Uh, this is actually my first time using this pan, so fingers crossed <laughs> that we're going to get good results on this awesome induction oven. And that, that pan would work on here. Oh, oh yeah. Let's level up. Yeah, yeah. Ready. I'm turn this on to medium high. So heat your pan up to medium high. Once you have your green beans trimmed, here's an update on the tomatoes. Okay, so we might need to try to catch up with trimming the beans. Okay, no problem. That's okay, I'll just tell you more about beans. So these green beans, I mean, I'm also drowning in green beans. And because I went on vacation, some of my beans have like developed beans. Um, so I've just been shucking away with my husband while we're like watching TV and <laughs> making beans. But I'm growing this type, works perfectly well for this uh, recipe. I've grown the yellow wax beans, also works phenomenally. I actually like a mix because you get different colors. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also growing Chinese noodle beans, also known as yarn mung beans. Yes. That come, yeah, either purple, red, or green. Those work great too. So whatever bean you have on hand is fine. I grew some purple yarn mung beans a couple of years ago, and they're so fun because yeah. they were like an actual yard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are actually related to cow beans, not not beans. If you look at them, they'll have like one flower that have a horn branched out and each horn becomes a, a bean. Yeah. Fun fact, not like these. Um, yeah. How's everybody on their trimming of the uh, green beans? Robert had a question about what kind of oil to use in the frying pan. Nice question. So everyone should have received avocado oil because of the high smoking point, you can use vegetable oil, peanut oil, whatever oil, as long as it has a high smoking point. We're gonna use avocado today because it's neutral in taste and has a high smoking point. And I wanna tell myself it's healthier, we'll see. <laughs> so we're gonna put one tablespoon of this avocado oil in our skillet to get it ready for the blistering. Dang, this is fast and very hot. Okay, turn it down. Ooh, I hope I don't set off the smoke I should. Touch one bean. I've added my beans into this pretty hot skillet. I see the oil kind of smoking and <laughs> really hope I don't have to evacuate everyone out of the store. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we're gonna wait for it to blister. Uh, now we also wanna put a little bit of salt. You're gonna put maybe one teaspoon of salt at this point all over your beans to start that salting process. Green beans are kind of hard to take on salt, so you really want to get them started early. And you want to lay everything into a single layer if possible. So this pan is perfect. I wanted to work with this pan because, you know, I feel like the layering is better. Single layer, I'm just giving it a quick toss and then leaving it alone and letting it blister. Uh, for those that are doing the stove top, Rice, you can probably start your rice now. Yes. Um, and remember, you drain it and put in just shy of two cups of water. And I guess you would turn it on to medium. 
I'm really not an expert at stovetop rice. <laughs> Maybe you bring it to boil and then simmer. Yeah, bring it to boil and then simmer. Um, and I think it's usually like 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Apologies. <laughs> just really growing up with rice cookers, we just like press a button. <laughs> okay, let me check my order of operations. I think the next step is for the vegetarian friends to prepare your mushrooms because for the uh, folks cooking with pork, that is already done. For folks cooking with uh, mushroom, you're gonna need to wipe your mushroom clean and dice your mushroom. I would say like a smallish dice, maybe the size of like this green onion is good because that is going to be the basis of your blistered green beans, whereas the other folks were gonna use ground pork. And the tofu will go with the eggplant. The tofu is for the eggplant, yes. A lot of moving parts. That's why we really gotta make sure we have everything prepped. It's so colorful. I'm gonna peek at the eggplant and see how they're doing. I think I could use a little bit more time. Yeah. All right. For folks who are using pork, we're gonna go ahead and start the eggplant sauce, the fish fragrance sauce. Set a bowl aside for your blistered beans because we're gonna fish them out after they've been properly blistered to actually do the next step. Okay. Okay. Let me, use a, let me use the trusty <laughs> and see how's our blistering. Not quite there. Yeah, I think you're right. When I got a little nervous about the smoking, I like turned down. It will keep right back up. Yeah. And I sometimes would put it, if you really wanted to cook, I'd probably do 240 on heat. Um, but, but if you, depending on how, how Okay, let's try two. Okay. In China, sometimes you'll see um, giant chopsticks that are like, a, you know, a yard long, and you can stand here and do this. <laughs> Start frying from afar. I don't have those. That's so cool. But I think once when I went to China, I bought those as souvenirs for friends and family back home, and it was a huge hit because they're so comically ginormous. <laughs> I'm just kind of swishing them around a little bit to make sure that they get, you know, nicely evenly browned. Definitely want to make sure you cook these uh, beans and you'll start to see the skin get a little bit wrinkly. That's a good sign. When it's uniformly wrinkly and a little bit blackened, they're ready to get fished out. And right now you see they're not uh, pliable. Once they're done, they'll be kind of bendy but still have some of that green color. You want that. We're not gonna cook these to death. Um, Lisa says, I'm doing veggies. I learned how to cook more veggies. Um, what do you mean by wipe the mushroom? And maybe um, like with a, with a paper towel or something yes, like that? Yes, I have some mushrooms I can demonstrate. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of them should be more or less okay. Yeah. Um, they come from flyaways, so they're super fresh. Right. So, um, you know, you may or may not know this, but mushrooms can hold a lot of water. So you typically don't want to wash your mushrooms when you're washing produce. You want to take a damp paper towel and you want to wipe, or a um, kitchen towel, and you want to wipe the caps like this, just to get some of that dirt off. But I think these are probably grown on a non-dirt medium, like yeah. really, I think they're fine. <laughs> yeah, they're grown on bags, so. Just like that. But I would not, um, I would not rinse them with water or anything like that. Coffee break? <laughs> yeah. How's everyone doing? We're starting to see a little bit of blistering. I 
got a I got a text from one of the attendees trying to show you the um right. oh gorgeous oh my gosh well done that is I think Anna is steaming hers good job Anna and David task we're going to make the fish fragrance sauce or start the saucing process on the side right now because i think the eggplants still have a little bit of time the blistering still has a bit of time so we're going to start this off. okay so small bowl have a medium sized bowl because there's a lot that's going to go into the sauce all right so in here you will find some very scary looking red <laughs> stuff <laughs> This will all go into this dish, but do not worry. There's also a lot of sugar, so <laughs> kind of balances things out. So the first thing that you're gonna toss into your bowl to create the sauce is all of this pickled chili. And I think we got these from Farm yeah. And this is the brand that we got. It's the green label. And is this for the green beans or this is for the eggplant? Okay, this yummy. is the foundation of fish fragrant, aka chili, <laughs> chili and vinegar and sugar. Okay, so this is all of our minced um, pickled chili. It smells really good. It looks kind of scary, but you'll be fine. I hope you'll be fine. <laughs> So this is four tablespoons already pre-measured out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we have four tablespoons of this chili. I know, yet again with the chili. Chili broad bean paste. Um, you know, during the fermentation process, the beans like take on this umami flavor, like with soy sauce. This is from Far East as well. So we're gonna put all of this in. I believe they have both chili broad bean and regular broad bean. I've gone with the chili to be more Sichuan. <laughs> but if you can't find the chili broad bean, you can use regular as well. You know, many Asian cultures have some sort of a fermented bean um, as their umami base. So we're going to add in all of this chili bean sauce. It's going to be a lot of sauce because this particular dish is quite sauce heavy. We call these dishes things that make you eat a lot of rice because it's just really delicious and kind of saucy and it just coats the rice. It's perfect. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is add one tablespoon of the soy sauce or tamari. This is light soy sauce. You only have light soy sauce or tamari today. Again, dark soy sauce, if you're cooking this uh, non gluten free, you can add some of that in here at this point to just make the color a bit more brown. Mm. So one tablespoon. How's everyone doing? Then we're gonna put in two tablespoons of Chinese vinegar. Chinese vinegar is not anything like balsamic vinegar. It's its own thing. It's extremely pungent. I don't know what it's made from, actually. Yeah. It's <laughs> not great. Rice? Maybe rice? Or like fermented rice? Probably. Yeah. It's, it Ooh. looks like the color of balsamic vinegar. Yes. Oh. And yeah. Chinese vinegar, if you like dumplings, you must buy this. Cannot have dumplings oh, with balsamic. Right. That okay. is just not no, going to no. happen. So <laughs> it's like salty. Yeah. Oh, no. no, it's very it's distinctly umami vinegar flavor. So we're going to add two tablespoons. You'll have more than two in here because we need some vinegar for our beans. I'm just going to toss it a little bit, make sure we're not burning over here. So two tablespoons of Chinese vinegar, in we go. I think you probably have three tablespoons total. I think David says, learning so much. Thank you. <laughs> David, is that you, the toast? Toaster oven fire? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Okay. And then 
we're going to put in a shocking amount of sugar in here. Um, if you have stevia, you can do that too, but to make it authentic, like, let's just go with the sugar. It's fine. So I've just cleaned my spoon. This is a tablespoon. Get ready, y'all, because it's going to be three tablespoons of sugar. Um, I would not make this every day, but special occasions probably okay. Three tablespoons of sugar. Okay. It's going to make it really soggy. Yes. And sticky. Mm. So for those who love like a sticky sauce, man, this sauce is for you. Okay, cool. I'm gonna check on my steamed eggplant and fish them out. I think they may be ready to go. I also have my bowl on the side just so I know that I can put the eggplant mm. somewhere. I guess my, how much sugar was it? It was three tablespoons. Three tablespoons, yeah. Of course, this is to taste. If you find in the future that this is too sweet for you, you can cut it down. You can replace it with stevia or any other sugar substitute, but we're just going original here. I'm gonna go and check on my eggplant and take them out. I think they're ready. Oh yeah. There you go, look. Oh, that's good. Right? It's not smaller tongue. If you have tongs, otherwise, a spoon to ladle them up. I think these eggplant are ready. They're a little bit translucent on the inside. They're not mushy yet, which is good. You don't want mushy eggplant because they're going to cook in a sauce. So you still want some structure to your eggplant. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Calm down. Yeah, that will take some oil. You can turn off your eggplant. I like this pot. I like your pot. I'm going to get one. You. It really was like $30 or something. That's pretty good. Okay. All right. So our eggplant is all out of the steamer and off to the side. Cool. We're going to come back to this, but I need to clean my wok slash steamer and get it ready for the frying of the other ingredients. Mm. Putting everything together. So you're going to use the same pan that you steamed for the eggplant, uh, for the sauce, right? Yes, I am going to. Cool. If you use one of those giant uh, pots, you may want to change to a different to a different setup. I'm gonna give my beans a toss, make sure it's still blistering. Ooh, we're getting some nice color. Mm -hmm. They're kind of getting bendy, that's good. I might turn it up just a bit. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. About a half hour. Great. Here's our tomatoes. They're looking amazing. Green beans are looking really great.
they're kind of singing a little bit. I don't know if you can hear, but they're making like little squeaky noises. That's a good thing. <laughs> Now we're going to do some multitasking. I know we've been multitasking this whole time. Yeah. But Sarah told me about the This time. is the advanced, an advanced class. <laughs> is it? <laughs> the master class. I don't know how Chinese oh. families do this, where they just like <laughs> flip it out, flip it out. Oh, fun fact. Um, maybe a tip. When my mom does cooking at home, she will put the finished dishes in the oven, not heated or anything, just like insulated in the oven. Oh. So it will be served. And she'll put like a bowl, inverted bowl on top. Mm. So when everything comes out in a family setting, they're all kind of warm. Mm. Beans are almost ready. Here's where we're going to be very happy about our mise en place because things are just going to get thrown together. Okay. <laughs> Get ready. So <laughs> Get ready. We're heating, heat up this pan here for the eggplant and keep your beans going. <laughs> We're getting hungry. I'm I getting think hungry. so hungry. <laughs> Are you guys getting hungry? <laughs> How's everybody's blistered beans? Start with the eggplant. We are going to put in about one tablespoon of the avocado oil. You should have enough to uh, have both of your bean and eggplant kind of done. So I'm going to wash my little I have a teaspoon, three teaspoons is a tablespoon. So yeah, there we go. So which one is this? This is the eggplant um, sauce, the avocado, avocado oil. oil, one tablespoon. I'm going to do medium high because we're yeah. going to stir fry. So, medium high. Robert says beans are done. Excellent. Once your beans are nicely blistered, fish them out and set them aside in a different bowl. Mine look like they could still use a little bit of time. All right. We're preheating to medium high for our fish fragrant eggplant. Next thing that we're going to do, I'm going to take my meat out of the fridge. If you have your tofu, grab your tofu. Okay, I've got my meat. Let me grab a little spoon <laughs> to separate those. <laughs> okay. With almost every single Chinese. What oil should we add to the eggplant? It's um the avocado oil. So we only use a little for the uh, green beans. So if you have a little bit more avocado oil, otherwise um canola or canola should be enough for enough of the. With almost every single Chinese stir fry ever, we start with cooking the ginger and the garlic to get them all fragrant. So we're going to add in two tablespoons, about half of what you have for ginger and half of the garlic. Okay. Two tablespoons of ginger and two garlic. And of course, you want to keep an eye on your garlic so it doesn't brown. And will the tofu folks do the same, do the same thing? thing. Yep, do the same thing. Because we need to infuse our oil with the scent of ginger mm. and garlic. So mm. that's a must. Oh, that already smells great. Here I am multitasking with my blistered beans. They're so close. <laughs> they should look like this. All of them. Oh. Little spots of brown. Okay. 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 Okay.
down. Okay. Next thing we're going to do once, oh, gosh, she's going. Still learning. <laughs> okay. It heats up really fast at yeah. first, and then it's well, like, then it's um, not as strong. Great. I think this looks kind of golden brown, kind of toasty. It's really starting to smell fragrant, mm -hmm. right? That's what you want, fragrant. Okay, then we're going to take our fork or your tofu. And for those using pork, I'm going to divide it in half and I'm going to chuck it in. And here I want to break the pork apart quickly so I get small pieces of pork. I don't want big clumps. Turn it up a little bit. Potato's still good. Potato's still good. It's doing its thing. We're not going to worry about it until pretty close to the end. As the pork is cooking, checking on these beans, I think I wager to say I maybe one or two minute away from being done. I'm gonna put the big guys in the middle so they kind of brown better. <laughs> you wanna make sure that the pork is very thoroughly cooked before anything else happens because you don't have raw pork. This is where we're gonna make that sauce. And once the sauce is nice thick and sticky, we're gonna quickly toss in the entire pork. Okay, as this is finishing up, the green beans are finishing up, the pork is cooking, we're gonna start to make uh, the cornstarch slurry. This is the secret to many Chinese cooking of what makes things nice and thick and syrupy, it's the cornstarch. And typically the ratio is three to one, three part water or three tablespoon water to one big tablespoon of cornstarch. You wanna pre-dissolve the cornstarch in cold water, and then you're gonna add the slurry in to make the sauce. And cold water always cornstarch, because okay. doesn't the hot water clump it? Clump it yeah. yeah, we want to avoid clumpage. So. <laughs> We're going to do this twice, once for the eggplant and once for the soup. So you'll see these in different applications. In Chinese, this is called gong qian. Qian is cornstarch or some sort of starch. Oh, I don't know. I guess it's a verb, <laughs> culinary term. So three tablespoons water, one tablespoon cornstarch. So I have cornstarch, adding one part cornstarch, and I'm gonna go over the sink and just get some water. And cold water. I'll show you. If you do less than three, sometimes I feel like it's it's too clumpy. I'm really not gonna quite get there. Okay, with that nice and done, I'm gonna turn left that you just start with your with your tea, oh, tea yeah. spoon. I'm trying to not have too much to you know washing up to do. All right, pork is over there. I'm gonna fish out our green beans. Great. They almost have like a little silver, silvery yeah. skin to them. That salt just makes it <laughs> delicious. That is the salt for sure. All right, folks. We're going to do a very similar process on the side. I'm not, not going to wipe out my wok or anything like that or pan. We're going to go straight in. First, the 
rest of our um, avocado oil goes in. Next, we are going to actually get a little dangerous. <laughs> We're going to start with our green <laughs> peppercorn. So just like with the garlic and the ginger, you do need to toast these, you know, like toasting spices is a common thing to do in many different cuisines, including Chinese, oh my goodness, Chinese cuisine. If you are a brave soul, I invite you to taste one of each. You should have red peppercorn and green peppercorn. They are slightly different. I think they're two different types of peppercorn plants, but we're gonna use both of them. So avocado oil. Why not? You remind me of something. I don't, I don't know what it reminds me of. Okay, so I read online that this tinkles the same part of your brain as fizzy water, oh. <laughs> but I'm not sure. I cannot cite my source. Not spicy. No, it's good. But it's yeah, it's, it's weird. Like... Yeah, it's. I oh, shouldn't say weird. That's not the right use. It's yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're gonna do this is one teaspoon of both. Um, we're gonna add both in right away. Oh, the fizzy water. Yeah. It's like carbonated. What? Sorry, that was one teaspoon. Oh, sorry, I just missed those two things that you just put. I added in one teaspoon of the green peppercorn and one of the red peppercorn. Just add the whole thing. You are only given one of each. Great, okay. thank you. And we, I have a medium high wok that I, or pan that I am just stir frying. I added all of my remaining avocado oil. That tastes like wine. It's wine. Mm -hmm. It has a very distinct smell. Um, this looks very scary, this bag of dry chili. I know, but it's gonna be okay because we're not gonna break this apart. If you break it apart, then all of the seeds will fall out. For this dish, we're gonna keep it pretty mild. So we're gonna throw in the whole chilies to toast in a little bit. If you really wanna level up that spicy, you can, you can break it apart. I'm not gonna do it. Okay, as my peppercorn are toasting, I'm going to check on this ground pork. Looks pretty good. A little bit brown, perfect. Now we're going to add our pre mixed, fresh, fragrant mix right in, and I'm going to turn it down to like a medium level. Your house just smells really good right now. <laughs> People are gonna be jealous of the co-op when they're, <laughs> um, can the colander be moved? Lauren, do you mean this uh, right here or? So meet yourself as well. Okay. So we've added in the oh, sauce. Oh, okay, we added in the sauce. Now it looks kind of scary. Okay. And then next up, we're gonna take our slurry. You see how it has settled on the bottom, the cornstarch? Are you gonna give it a quick mix? Did they put it in during the brown pork stage? So put so, your, if you didn't put your tofu in, you can put your tofu in with your onion, or sorry, with your garlic and ginger. Yes. And then you, once that um, starts to cook a little, you can put your um, fresh fragrant sauce in. 
That's right, yes, because tofu does not need to be like as thoroughly cooked as the ground pork, so you're okay. Whereas the ground pork takes a little bit longer. Okay, so we've added our slurry and you can see it's kind of getting thick. And now, do we have the slurry to the tofu? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now we're gonna put our eggplant in, very gently stir to coat. Added your fish fragrance sauce, your corn starch, and now your eggplant. Eggplant looks so good. It looks so tender. I hope so. And remember, we had some corn starch on the eggplant as well. So, pretty good. Just going to let it hang out in the sauce on low for a little bit as we finish up the beans. All right, people working on the beans. I know it's coming together. Hopefully we still have some time, 10 minutes. Okay, yeah, 10 minutes, wonderful. I'm gonna chuck in all of our chilies. You have 10 chilies, all of it. Just are you in. chili then? Okay. Then we're gonna put all of our ginger, all of our garlic, oh, sorry, garlic and ginger. And just like so much fun, I'm learning the fun. I'm going, I'm almost done with this and that's going to sign off. Thank you okay. so much. You're Thank welcome. you, Angia. I'm so glad you came. Put your mustard green. You're going to bite on a little bit the different types of peppercorn as you're eating this meal. I think that's the most, most authentic. We don't really pick out our peppercorns before. <laughs> Um, putting in all the other ingredients. Yeah. So you might get a little bit of a surprise here. Yeah, you see the chilies are like really bright and colorful. They're there for flavor, but they're also there just to be beautiful. As I said, can we take the stems off the mushrooms? Yeah, if you want. Yeah, you, you can um, if they're really tough. Otherwise, um, sometimes I leave them on. Now, if you have your mushroom prepped, and your pork prepped, you're going to add these in. So you'd be adding your shiitake in here. And the shiitakes are grown regionally. They're grown in southern Illinois. Awesome. Beans are looking great. Do. <laughs> Getting all your angles. Thank you. <laughs> so our eggplant is hanging out on this oh. kind of warm, warm walk. I think I have it on low right now just to keep it Great. nice and hot. Great. Here, um, if you're using shiitake, it should be already in here cooking away. I actually really like the vegetarian variation for this. Because the mushroom is so savory and nice. Yeah, it's fun. I love to talk. All right, I'm gonna grab a spoon and give this a quick taste test. Make sure. Again, we call this something that's like. <laughs> Makes the rice disappear because of how saucy it is. As we're waiting for all of this to cook down, we're going to do another cornstarch slurry to prepare our soup. Okay. So again, the three tablespoons of water, cold water, to one tablespoon cornstarch.
Or just the rest of the bag? Four. Oh, okay. So I have, yeah, three tablespoons of cornstarch and five tablespoons. Oh, okay. So I think it's the same. Sorry, yeah. Three tablespoons cornstarch, five tablespoons water. Or the, re or the rest of the bag or whatever. So all of it comes together. Yay! Any questions? Set aside. Crack our eggs and scramble them and get that ready for the egg drop part of the soup. Ooh, exciting. I know. I'm just going to give my little. Ooh. <laughs> I got my meat chunk. Crack your eggs into a bowl. Now we're going to add a tiny bit of water to this and mix it all. Just kind of feed it. I always use chocolate in way. Gonna add a little bit, like a teaspoon, a splash of water into your eggs. Here, I will also add a little pinch of salt too. All of this is optional, but just to make sure the flavor is in there. Pinch of salt. Okay, we're going to set this aside. We're going to finish our eggplant with some garnish, uh, some pre prepped scallions. I'm going to put most, oh, like, yeah, I'm going to say half of everything. I'll put in half of your scallions. Yeah, half of your scallions. Most of them will go into the soup. Right? Yeah. Okay. vinegar here for our salad. All right. And we're going to do a bit of the peppercorn oil. Very potent. You only need a few drops just to remind your tongue that there is peppercorn in there. Uh, which dish are you working on? We're working on the green beans. So just a little bit of peppercorn oil. Yeah. For the brave souls, you can uh, have a taste. If you want to add more, you can. If you don't want to add any, you don't need to. Are we supposed to put an egg in? We're saving the egg for our soup um, that's going to go uh, in soon. All right, two dishes done. Next, we're going to go to the soup. What I'm going to do is I am going to Remove some of this 
and you may not have any. Mine just has some of this tomato foam because I turned the heat on too high, but you may not have any, so you may not need to worry about this. I'm just gonna skim it, take off some of the foam. Like a regular egg drop soup, but that's just water. Yep, yep, it is not made with water and salt. So, yep. yeah. that's it. <laughs> um, you can get fancy and do chicken stock, but for most home cooks, you use water. Now, we're going to add in the corn slurry all in one go. Right to the stick, the mixture, and now you're going to add your white pepper. Right. White pepper to the soup. I think you said one tablespoon of white pepper. It's quite a pungent flavor. Mm. And we do want the white pepper. It's one of the only seasons we have going on in here. Mm. Remember, we just have water, tomato, haven't followed me yet, you can add the white pepper before the cornstarch so it doesn't come off. Okay. Next step, I'm going to add in our scallion and our soup into the soup. And we're going to add the egg. I'm going to use chopstick. You can use a fork and I make kind of two like a V shape with my chopstick and slowly pour the egg in. Oh. Like so, to make that egg drop texture. Oh my goodness. Will you explain that again? Yes. Make a V shape with my chopstick and pour along the chopstick slowly in a circle to create that egg drop situation. <laughs> no idea. Yeah. So then it's like kind of like more strings. Exactly. So it's more strings. Mm. And you see, because of the cornstarch, the egg is suspended. Just do a little quick ta da. Oh, egg drop. Done. So that is done. Next up, we have to do is quickly put together our cucumbers and we're ready to eat. So I'm going to take out the cucumber. I'm sorry I ran over time by a little bit. But you'll see there's so much water that came out of this cucumber, right? We're going to drain and press out the water. So I've drained my cucumber and try to press out as much water as possible. But basically for all of you who are following along, you're gonna put a little bit of sesame oil, if you're leaving right now, you're gonna put a little bit of sesame oil in your soup and we're gonna make the sauce for the cucumber and you're ready to serve. But for those who are still following along, we're just gonna make it together. All right, so I've got my bowl. Now I'm gonna put in my the rest of my vinegar. Uh, the Chinese vinegar. The Chinese vinegar. My soy sauce. You can put in the vinegar, the Chinese vinegar, the soy sauce, the rest of it. Yep. I'm gonna put half of the sesame oil because I want to use the other half for my soup. Half of the sesame oil. And you can pour the rest into the soup. I'm gonna put my chili oil because everything is better with chili oil. 
All of your chili. All oil. of your chili. I'm gonna put ah we're missing uh, our garlic. If you have a garlic press, go ahead and smash the garlic. If you have a more couple yeah. of the three, three cloves. Three cloves, or you can mince it. Or you can mince it. To make it kind of easy to smash, you can throw in a little bit of salt to the abrasive. Oh, I forgot. We're gonna throw in some sugar into the beans too. Little sugar into the beans, maybe like a teaspoon. Yeah. It'll <laughs> be fine. It's just to finish up that bean. We put a little sugar in a lot of our cooking, just a pinch to, of sugar. Yeah, pinch of sugar. We're also gonna put a pinch in the sauce too. Pinch into the cucumber sauce. Yes. Everybody doing to turn off the soup, please. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Turn off your soup. Once you're sure that the eggs are cooked, we're gonna put our garlic paste. If I had a little more time, <laughs> if I managed my time better, I would have gotten them to be less chunky, but that's okay. We're just gonna have to eat oh, garlic. So good. So okay. Garlic into your sauce for the cucumbers. Stir in our cucumber salt. Mm. Have a little taste. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I still have some peppercorn oil left. I'm gonna whack that in too. This is kind of like a finishing for a lot of Szechuan style salads. All right, we got our bowl of sauce ready. And now we're going to put in our cucumber. Okay, we're gonna put in our cucumber. And chopstick power, <laughs> stir it to cook. Really refreshing. You don't have to do this just with cucumber. Radish is also really good. You can have thinly sliced radish treated the same way. Mm. You know, pre-salt. Even cabbage. My family does a lot of cabbage, like Chinese cabbage, mm. salads. Mm. Yeah, napa cabbage. And we're gonna put in the sesame seeds, all of it. Stir some more. Mm. And that's it, folks. <laughs> this is all of the, the dishes that we're going to make today. And we went over time a little bit, but hopefully oh, it was worth it. Yeah. Does mm -hmm. anyone have any questions or want to talk about anything? So we have our sensei itang. So we have a cold cucumber salad. We have our blistered green bean. We have our fish fragrant aubergine. And we have our soup. Yes, it looks incredible. Any last questions before we let you guys get to dinner? Claire says, thank you. That was awesome. Abby says, thank you. Kayla says, thank you. Anytime. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you. We learned a lot. Oh, <laughs> good. Yeah. And I'll, um, I'll, uh,
I'll take a picture of some of the some of the ingredients that we got from Far East and Fresh International. I can send that to you guys in an email. Um, and I will have the recording available and I'll send that to get to you guys probably tomorrow or the next day. Okay. Um, but yeah, thanks for me so much. Oh, after you sauteed it with the garlic and the ginger, dump in your next This is for Lisa's question. Can you give directions for finishing the tofu? You gave the pork. So I think with that one is the um after the tofu is crumbled, sauteed, you add in that pre-mix of the fish fragrant sauce. And then you add in your cornstarch slurry to combine tofu sauce slurry. So it's kind of like a syrupy situation. Then you dump in your eggplant um, and just toss to coat. And you would finish with a little bit of the scallions. Does that help, Lisa? Okay, awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to Juan for all these amazing dishes. I know you guys are gonna have a great meal. Um, any last questions before we before we end? Oh, maybe it was the green onions. I gotcha. Sorry, scallions, green onions, same same thing. And I think I added in there. I'm sorry, I added in the scallions just as a garnish. But I think in the recipe, they were just for this egg drop soup. Soupy. Yeah, but in almost all Chinese stir fries, you can add in scallions or cilantro as your finishing garnish. Okay, you guys, thanks so much. We'll, uh, I'll make sure to send the recording and thank you uh, so yeah, much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Made some you, amazing everyone. dishes. Uh, we'll send you the recording tomorrow. Um, and thank you so, so much for, for attending. Um, any last questions? Okay. Okay, take care. Have a great Bye. rest of your evening. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye.